All right, guys, the first thing we're going to cover is the grip of the handgun. We see the most inconsistencies with the grip um, and inefficiencies as well. So we really want to concentrate on getting a consistent grip every single time, and we're going to talk about the proper grip right now and the mechanics behind it. My grip starts in the draw, which we're going to cover here in a little while. But what I want to find first is a high tain grip. Okay, I want to get this, this beaver tail, like on the Smith & Wesson MP here, is really, really uh, drastic so your hand can get high up in there and higher up on the, on the height over bore ratio, higher on the barrel. If we could put our hand right here on the back of the slide and shoot it, we would. That would be ultimate recoil control, but we can't. So that's what I like to choose when I'm looking for a gun, is a high grip just like this. But you'll notice I have this gap in here. Now you're going to see lots of different types of grips. You'll see thumbs down grips. That's a revolver grip. We don't need a revolver grip here because this has a tang. Revolvers don't have back straps or tangs like this. Okay, So we need to fill this entire void. That's my priority. This is not filling the void. This is filling the void. This is actually a huge contact portion, this, this part of your hand. And this has got to really be pressing on that gun. You'll notice that a lot of people will shoot a thumbs up grip or a thumbs out grip. You're minimizing the contact on the gun. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're, you're providing path of least resistance, which is what we, won't, we don't want. And I'm going to cover that here in a second. So we want to fill that entire void with a thumbs forward grip. So if you put my finger straight out, you're going to see they're kind of at a 45 degree angle down. So that's a good reference tool right there is to rotate your hand down. Your thumb will be straight and in line with the bore. And then you can curl those fingers underneath. I put a little reference notch in my trigger guard. So when that index trigger finger comes up underneath, it wedges in there. And then you'll see over here that these fingers will rest in these grooves. And that is about 100% grip that I can get. Does anybody know the 60-40 grip? Matt, what do you use under stress? Do you use 60% on the strong or the weapon hand and 40% on the reaction hand? What do you use? Is it 42%, 42 and a half? Not sure how to, how to judge the percentage on either side. Exactly. You don't know. You don't know what you use under stress, but I know that 100% and 100% works for me. So that's what I'm going to stick with. So that's the mechanics right there. Okay. What I'm going to show you guys now is the mechanics of the handgun and how it recoils. I'm going to start off with a weapon hand only grip. Now what I want you guys to do, and you can come into where you can see me a little better if you need to, but watch how the gun recoils, okay? Which way did the gun just recoil? Up and left. Up and left. Because I have resistance on this side and no resistance on this side, correct? All right, now let's try with the other side. Which way did the gun recoil? Right. Up and to the right. Resistance, no resistance. Now let's, let's, let's get 100% grip, but I'm not going to get a high tain grip. Which way did it recoil? Straight up. Straight, up. Straight up. Because I have equal tension, equal resistance on each side, but I didn't have that high tain grip. Now I'm going to get 100% high tain grip and watch what the gun does. Which way did the gun recoil? Straight back. So guys, right there are the mechanics of a handgun. That's how the recoil works, and that's why you've got to have 100% maximum contact on the gun. Thumbs down, thumbs up, teacups, wrist grabs, Hawaii 5 whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to use, that's fine, but think about the mechanics and see if they justif justify themselves in your own minds by just watching that demonstration right there.